Georgie Barrett, tech journalist and broadcaster, and welcome to OneWeb's ninth satellite launch. Now, if you've been following our progress, you'll know that there are already more than 250 OneWeb satellites in a low Earth orbit. Each one of those little solar-powered marvels is around the size and weight of a fridge or washing machine. And they are moving through orbit, preparing to provide low latency, high speed internet from space. Each launch expands OneWeb's capability to deliver that connectivity lifeline to those parts of the world where it's needed most. To date, eight launches have delivered a total of 254 satellites into orbit, enabling OneWeb to offer its communication service from its satellites to all regions north of 50 degrees latitude later this year. That's an area that stretches from the North Pole to the southernmost tip of the UK and connects many communities in Northern Europe, Greenland, Iceland, Canada and Alaska who cannot rely on ground-based communications. Launch 9 will add another 34 satellites to this orbiting network, which will keep up the pace of the rollout to achieve OneWeb's overall mission, to connect the unconnected around the world. And that's a big mission, because while it seems that everyone has a smartphone these days, almost half the world, more than 4 billion people, are not yet online. And for many that are, the service can be slow and patchy. So let's now have an update on OneWeb service progress, as we're going to hear from senior technology engineer, Maita Carreras. The team at OneWeb continues to work super hard and with a lot of passion as always during a busy summer as we prepare to introduce our services for the first time later this year. Today we are excited to be watching another 34 satellites lift off which will bring us to 288 satellites in orbit. Our team has been working super hard since the last launch to raise our satellites up to their final destination, 1,200 kilometers above Earth, and also continuing to build the network on the ground. This means continuing to work on our ground stations and user terminals, core pieces of the system and super important to begin demonstrations of our service. And today, I'm so lucky because I have the chance of being at the demonstration site. You can see behind me our demonstration antennas ready to perform connectivity demonstrations for our customers. We also want to give a warm welcome to our new investment partner, Hanwha, who will bring valuable technology expertise and we are thrilled to have them on board. Welcome. And with all these, which are the next challenges for Team OneWeb? We have many. We will be showcasing more of our services in demonstrations we are starting customer services this fall and of course more launches will follow as we keep building the network. Go Team OneWeb and wishing the satellites a safe flight. Now for OneWeb's ninth launch we return to the historic Bakador Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan which lies about 2,000 kilometers southeast of Moscow. If you know your space history, you might know the name of this legendary location. At the very beginning of the space race, 64 years ago, Sputnik 1, the first man-made satellite, launched into space from Bakunov. Vostok 1, the first human space flight with Yuri Gagarin, also made history from here in 1961. So, today, OneWeb's pioneering mission and revolutionary technology will also use Bakunov as its launch pad. Of course, none of what OneWeb has done would have been possible without the support and expertise of Ariane Spass. Their team provides the Soyuz rocket that actually carries the OneWeb satellites into space, and they'll be monitoring this launch at every step from their HQ in France. So, let's hear from Ariane Spass CEO, Stefan Israel, for an update on the mission. Hello everybody. In a few minutes, our Soyuz launch vehicle is going to deliver 34 more OneWeb satellites into orbit. 
The mission duration will be 3 hours and 45 minutes. This launch will be delivered from the Baikonur spaceport. For this mission, I would like to thank all our partners federated by Roscosmos, the Russian Space Agency, and for sure, our customer one way. So now, enjoy the show. Now, earlier this week, the Soyuz ST-34 rocket was rolled into its launch position. Let's have a look at the rocket's journey to the launch pad. The Soyuz launch vehicle will be carrying the 34 OneWeb satellites. They're all carried in the dispenser at the top of the launcher and the complete stack of 34 OneWeb satellites on this upper stage are protected by the fairing for their journey to space. Now this is all done in a dedicated clean room to make sure no dirt or debris can pollute the satellite's infrastructure. This upper stage forms the top of the rocket and it's then installed on top of the Soyuz three-stage launch vehicle. We'll see these three stages separate during the launch. The four boosters arranged around the bottom of the rocket are dedicated to powering the rocket through the lower atmosphere and then they are discarded as the engine in the second stage takes over. Now, three days before the launch, the complete launch vehicle is transferred to the launch pad. At Bacchanal, the rocket is brought to the launch pad by a special 500 meter railway. And it's transported horizontally and then raised into its vertical takeoff position when it reaches the launch pad. Once this is complete, various connecting supply cables are attached. And then two days before launch, a full dress rehearsal is completed to make sure that all the systems are working perfectly. And here we are with less than one and a half minutes to lift off. The launch sequence itself is automatic, triggered by an ignition key. It begins around five minutes before liftoff. At two minutes and at 25 seconds before liftoff, so about a minute ago, the umbilical connectors were separated. In the meantime, there is the pressurization of the Soyuz three-stage tanks. And at minus 45 seconds, the transfer will be done to the three-stage onboard power. During the ignition sequence, we will have a progressive increasing of the thrust level, which will enable the launch team to check that the engines work normally. First, there'll be the ignition at 16 seconds before liftoff, followed by a preliminary thrust level of 20% of full power, which will be at 11 seconds before liftoff, and then an immediate thrust level of 85% of full power, four seconds before liftoff. And finally, full thrust level of 100% at liftoff. So we're literally moments away. I can already see that the smoke is starting to billow around. So that means that that ignition sequence has already begun. You can see it there sitting on the launch pad where it has been for the past three days. And of course, it now is fully autonomous. So uh, very shortly, we'll see the infrastructure fall away and we'll start. And there it is. The infrastructure has now come away. So they're going to be working through those different thrust levels. You can see the smoke billowing around it. It looks incredibly atmospherical. Remember, it's currently 3 a.m. over where they're launching it. So they've been working throughout the night to get to this point. So they're going to be working up through those different thrust levels, starting to ignite the engines. And very shortly, we'll see those engines fire up. And you can hear them on the background speaking through the countdown as it starts to prepare more and more. We've got lovely clear conditions this evening or this morning for where they are, wherever you're watching in the world. And we'll be there very, very shortly. This is really the moment that I get the most excited about because it's incredibly exciting as you see it sitting there getting ready for the big final moment. 
And remember, they've done a full dress rehearsal of this two days ago. So they would have gone through all the checks and systems, making sure that everything is in place. And now it's the moment where we can actually see the lift off. So this is launch number nine. And it's going to take another, another load of satellites up into the air. And it will have lift off any moment now. I haven't got anything to report as we sit patiently waiting to see Launch 9 take off. Still waiting. We can still see that there's definitely smoke billowing around. Okay, I have actually just got information that we have report of a sequence interruption. So currently it is not going to take off right this second in time. We don't know if this means that it actually won't be taking off at all tonight. But what we do know is that those automatic checks that it's going through, something has been raised, something has stopped it from doing its normal sequence. So we'll just have to sit tight. I've got an ear to Ariane Spass. I can hear what's going on and getting reports as and when they come in. I mean, this is the part of doing a live launch, isn't it? We, we don't quite know what will happen. And this is also what makes it incredibly exciting. So we're waiting on an update on our launch sequence interruption. So that's what I've been given. That's the information that I've been given that there has been an interruption with the launch sequence. So for now, we just sit tight. And I'm sure there's many people working behind the scenes now, working out what that interruption is. Because let me remind you that this sequence is all autonomous. So if there's anything that doesn't quite work, then obviously the software or the computers stop the, the um, launch sequence. So that's currently where we're at at the moment. The smoke is still billowing though, so there is definitely something still happening. Okay, so again, we, we haven't got a lot of information here. All I've been told is in that last final minute before launch, there was a sequence interruption, a launch sequence interruption. So that's all the information that we've currently been given. Obviously, we would love to see this take place tonight, but equally, you know, we don't want any damage done to the rocket or the satellite. So, of course, if, if the engineers, if the technicians don't feel like it's safe and doesn't feel like it will be going through the correct procedure, then we'll put the brakes on it for tonight and, you know, there will be launch line will still happen. It just may not be at this current time. So for now, we just have to wait, see if there's any updates. Okay, so I have just had confirmation that Launch 9 has unfortunately been aborted for tonight. And on that note, and I'm sorry this is so abrupt because we were just ready to see it, but that actually does mean that we conclude this live broadcast. However, you can follow OneWeb and Ariane Spass's social media channels because we're posting all the latest updates there. And of course, we will be back again with Launch 9 and we'll be giving you all the updates once we work out exactly what that problem is and get to it. Thank you so much if you've tuned in for us tonight. We really, really appreciate it. And we look forward to coming back with Launch 9 soon. Goodbye.